All right, welcome to the presentation, everybody. Um, my name's Trevor, and tonight we're building on some of the things you guys should have learned about in one of our other presentations on Google AdSense. Um, if you haven't seen the last one, contact me about it. I can show you which one it is, but this is the next one in the series. This is, uh, is going to be part two, okay? And we're going to call this one um, what you need to know before you start your AdSense business. Okay. Um, first of all, guys, what what are or what is Google AdSense? For the, some of you guys who know or have been to some of my other recordings, specifically the last one, what somebody describe what it is exactly? Especially for those of you guys who are are just seeing this for the first time. Somebody walked up and said, you know, tell me about Google AdSense. What would you say? It's a way to make money. Yeah, definitely. It's advertisements on your site that make you money, for sure. How do you make money off of these ads? These, What you guys are looking at right now, these are just examples of, of advertisements that might show up on a website. These are, these are Google advertisements. Um, so if I'm posting one of these on my site, how is it that it actually, or how is it that I make money off of this ad? Yeah, Diana, it's just a click, right? So what's cool about Google AdSense advertising is, is really two things. One, uh, it's just a click, right? So if you found my site, saw one of these ads, and simply just clicked on it, I would get paid. There's no, there's no requirement for the click and then the sale. So if, if somebody clicks on one of these ads and doesn't buy anything, I still get paid the same. So it's very simple. Um, and the other thing I really like, guys, is this stuff populates on my site automatically. I don't have to go out there and negotiate anything. All I do is I set up a Google AdSense account, and I'm going to get paid from Google directly, and they are the ones that supply the advertisements on my site, right? Catherine, you say companies buy ad spots with Google, and Google portions some of the money to e-tailers like us who have websites that are related to the product that you're selling. Yep, that's perfect. Let's go into a little bit more detail on that right now. Um, but before we do, when, when we're talking about AdSense, I always get the question, when and how should I start, okay? Two things, there's two ways that I think you guys could start doing this. Number one, you could use AdSense on um, your blog. And, and I, not just any blog, if you guys have an e-commerce website already that we've been working on together and you have a blog associated with that e-commerce site, usually your blog that's associated with your e-commerce site is there primarily to try to promote your e-commerce site. Um, but what I'm saying is you can do it more than just, you, you can use it for more than just promoting your e-commerce site. You can actually throw up some ads and, and monetize your blog that way as well, okay? Um, number two, though, and this is this is more of what I've done over the years, you start a, a separate blog or a separate website specifically for the purpose of using AdSense and or affiliate marketing, um, which, which we would call like a niche blog. So you would create a blog that's on some sort of target market or, or, or some, sort of, uh, some sort of idea, something you're really passionate about, and we'll talk more about that here in just a second. That's that's how you should, you guys should start. So, if you already got your e-commerce business and you've already got your blog going and you want to you want to bring on some ads, you can do that. Or you're welcome to do the second way and start a separate blog altogether, okay? Now, this goes back to Catherine what you said just a minute ago. Let me give you guys some definitions when it comes to AdSense, okay? There's really three different parties involved. When, when when you're doing AdSense. Number one are the advertisers, okay? Advertisers would be businesses paying Google for their ads to be displayed. So um, we did this example last time, but let's say I'm, I'm Nike, right? I represent Nike, and I want some of my Nike ads displayed out there on some other websites on the internet. 
I go to Google and I tell Google that I'm willing to pay them X number of cents or dollars each time somebody clicks on one of those ads. And then what Google does is Google goes out to people like us. So in, this, in, in, in these definitions, entrepreneurs like you and me who own websites are called publishers. So that's us. Um, and we're the people that have content. We're the people who have websites out there that Nike may want to advertise on. And so what Google does is if, is if we sign up our sites for AdSense, um, Google then displays those ads on our website from Nike or, or whomever, right? We're just using Nike as an example. And then the third group here, which is the, the users, users would be people who find our website through internet searches or through social media and then click or don't click on our ads. Obviously, the only way we're making money off of this whole system is if we can figure out how to get lots of our visitors to click on those ads, right? Guys, does that make sense so far? So in other words, the strategy is if you own a website, you can post some of these Google ads on your website and it, and it doesn't matter if somebody clicks and buys, all they have to do is click on your ad and you're getting paid. Okay, and then Diana, let me get to that here in just a second. Diana says, how do we set up an independent blog site? I'm gonna share with you towards the end of this how to do that. And what we'll probably do, because we won't have enough time today, but we'll, we'll probably do a, a complete webinar on specifically how to do that. Because I, I know a lot of you guys have ideas for a blog that you're really interested in doing, but you're not exactly sure how to, how to set it up or get it started. Um, so we're gonna go step by step through that process. Okay, probably not tonight, but we'll do it um, potentially next week. Cheryl, good question. Cheryl just asked, so who decides where the ads show up on the website? Um, we do, the publishers, you and I do, Cheryl. Um, there are some limitations though, and, and, I'll, and I'll share some of those with you guys here in just a sec. Um, you're not you're only allowed to have a certain number of ads pop up because Google doesn't want your whole website just just to be one giant list of ads in fact they only allow per web page you know and this is just per page and I know a lot of you guys have hundreds of pages but you can have three separate ad spaces on any one page that display these types of ads and you can tell Google do you want it at the top of your site at the bottom on the sides there's some analysis out there that'll show kind of what's what's optimal or where you should place them, and you'll learn that through some of your own experience too. But again, to answer your question, Cheryl, yeah, you get to choose that. And no worries, Diana, we'll make sure we record it for you. So you'll have to catch it recorded if you can't be there. Okay, so some policies real quick. I got. I, I want to go, th I, I know some of your eyes are glazing over like, great, we're going to go through policies right now. Nobody likes to go through policies, but we've got to do it on Google AdSense because you've got one shot with, with AdSense. If you get on there and do something stupid, breaking some of their rules, whether it's on purpose or, or it's on accident, it doesn't matter. If you get on there and do something stupid, you're going to lose your account and you're not going to get another account. They, they give you one try. And if you, if you clearly can't follow their policies, they're not even going to mess with you. They're just going to cut you off. So that's why we're talking about policies right now. Now, number one, no adult content at all, ever. And they, they listed out all the different types of adult content that you can't have. Well, I'm gonna leave that up to your imagination, but bottom line is you can't have any, you're, like your site can't be, or, or even a page within your site can't be about anything that's adult. If it is, and you try to post an ad there, um, you'll get it rejected. Google sort of prides itself on being a, they call themselves like a, a fan, they want it to be a family oriented network, they call it for AdSense, meaning they don't, they don't want some of the really scummy sites out there to start posting ads. Because think about it, if you were Nike or any other reputable brand and you're advertising with Google, would you want your ad to display on a site that you know, has some sketchy material, I certainly wouldn't. And so that they're trying to prevent that from ever happening. So the advertisers who are trying to, you know, to promote their business, 
they feel comfortable advertising with Google because they know their stuff's not ever going to show up on some scummy on some scummy site that's out there. Okay. So anyway, I, I hope I didn't burst too many bubbles with that, right? Most of you guys, I hope, weren't thinking that that's what you were going to do, but that so it is. No adult content. Okay. Number two, um, nothing copyrighted. No copyrighted content. In other words, you can't put ads on a page that has content that's not yours. So, and, and I say with, with letter A there, no copied or duplicate content. So in other words, you can't create a site and then go to Wikipedia and just start copying articles from Wikipedia, right? And just posting them on your site. All of your content is just a bunch of copied articles and then try to post Google ads. Because Google knows if your content is copied or not. If it's copied content, they won't display their ads and you run the risk of getting your account suspended. So a lot of you guys who've done marketing with us have heard us talk over and over again about the value of having unique content. Um, even if it's copied from a reputable source, you don't want anything that's copied. So what that, that puts the onus of having really good original content on you. Now it doesn't mean that you have to go out there and, 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 do your own research and come up with all of your own content. You can go out there and look at what other people have written about a certain topic and, and change it up and, and put your own sort of spin on it and then, and then put it on your site. The example that Google gave, I actually watched a, an hour and a half webinar from Google directly about some of this stuff. I did it over the last few days so I could understand their policies just a little bit better. And one, one example one of the Google people gave is he said, you can't create a site. Let's say it's a gardening site, right? Mygardeninginformation.com is the site. And your idea was you're going to put out a bunch of gardening tips and tricks. And the way you were going to do it is you were going to go to YouTube and just paste YouTube videos on, on your new website and use that as your content. And then you were going to post ads on the site, hoping that, people would come to your site, watch the videos, and click on your ads. Well, your ads wouldn't pop up ever because if you're just posting a YouTube video originally that's not yours, that breaks their policies. And, and they would prefer you add value to what you're doing. So we're going to talk about this more in just a second, but they would prefer, the example they gave is, sure, you could post those YouTube videos because YouTube videos are open, they're open source, they're um, – uh, not open source, they're public domain. In other words, anybody can use them. So you could still post a video on your site, but what you'd want to do is you'd, you'd want to have a few paragraphs of explanation under it that you wrote yourself, right? Like you'd want, the, you'd want some information that you're originally creating, and if you did that and then posted some Google ads, then you wouldn't be breaking any policy, okay? Does that make sense, guys? Let me know if I need to spend any more time on that. Number three... Um, no encouraging people to click on your ads. So for example, if you've got this website, you can't have on the website something that says, hey, click on our Google ads, please, right? So you, you've got a list of your Google ads on the bottom of your site. You can't have put some text above it that says, hey, click on these. Or you can't say, hey, you know, support our website or support our cause by clicking on our ads. That, that breaks their policy. See, they, Google doesn't want people clicking on their ads just for the sake of supporting you. Because put yourself on the opposite end. If you're Nike and you're trying to get people to buy your Nike shoes and your Nike products, and it's costing you, Nike as a company, $1.50 every, every single time somebody clicks on your ad, you, you want those clicks to be from legitimate people who are actually interested in your product. You don't want those clicks to be people who are just like, oh, hey, I'm not interested in Nike, but I'm going to click on the ad just to support this person's website. It doesn't work that way. So they say no encouraging clicks. And certainly not. This is probably the number one no-no. You can't tell your friends or your neighbors or you can't hire a bunch of people internationally to come to your site and click on the ads because Google will figure that out and, and you'll get suspended. So that's what people would do, right? They'd, they'd create a site, they'd post all these ads, and then they would hire independent agencies from overseas to come to their site and click on their ads from all sorts of different countries. 
And it looks legitimate, and it doesn't. It looks legitimate because Google knows that these people are coming from different places, but it looks fishy because all these people are coming, and the only thing they're doing is they're clicking on your ads. So if you ever think you're tricky, you're, you know, you go down to the library and click on a bunch of ads, and then you call a friend, and you tell them to go to your site and click a bunch of ads, and then you go home and click some ads, and then you click some ads from your phone, and, and so you're trying to do it from different places to not get caught. You're going to get caught. You're going to lose your account, and that'll be that. So no, no clicking on your own stuff or having other people click on it, okay? Yeah, I see the problem with that. I guess if you could get away with it, you, you'd, you'd be operating a really great scam, right? But try, try to do business honestly, right? And there's no reason in the world you'd want to jeopardize your account, your account with AdSense by trying to manipulate a few clicks in your favor, okay? Um, yeah, Kirk, what about quote unquote view every aspect of my site? <laughs> yeah, that would still not be okay. <laughs> um, Cheryl says, I've seen on various pages lines that say that there are affiliates and when you click the owner of the page will be paid. They say this, is this permitted? Um, it, it actually, it is, if you're doing an affiliate site, you actually need a policies page that says that. Um, that's, that's just. In, in fact, legally, you're supposed to do that. But And that's fine. If you have a policy that says, hey, if you click on some of these ads, just know the owner's going to get paid, that's fine. But that's not, as long as you're not encouraging people and saying, hey, please click on the ads because we need it, or please support us, um, that's a different story. Um, yeah, that's more, so Cheryl said, so that kind of a, a policy has nothing to do with AdSense. Yeah, that's for affiliate networks or affiliate links. If So I, I know this is kind of getting off topic a little bit, but if you, if you have an affiliate website where you're posting affiliate links, um, you're supposed to have some sort of a policies page that states that you have ads on your site that compensate you as the owner of the site. Um, I, I, we can do, we can talk more about that, but you should have that, but that's not necessarily something you have to do with AdSense. Yeah. Um, number four is an interesting one. No deception. Okay. You can't make your ads look like other links on your site, um, and tricking people to click. So for example, let's say you have a site that, um, your, your links are all, are all green and you purposefully color, because you can customize your Google ads, you can make them have green links. So you, you customize your links with Google to make them green, and then you start inserting your ads in, in certain places that look like it would be not an ad. So in other words, you're trying to deceive people. You're trying to get them to click on this link, whereas someone thinks maybe they're just going to another place on your site when in fact um, they're clicking on an ad. And this goes along with number five, no altering ad code. Most of you guys probably couldn't do this anyway. I don't know code well enough to do it either, but to give you an example of why this is on their policies, um, some, some developers did something where they had a, a website that showed videos. And what would happen is if you wanted to play one of the videos, you put your mouse over the video play button, and right before you were going to click, a little ad would pop up over the video that was an AdSense ad, and it would basically say, you, like you had to you had to basically click the ad before you could click on the video it forced you to do it and so google had to put out this policy to make it to where you couldn't force people to do that so no altering ad code i know that won't apply to a lot of you guys but that's that's the rule um and then it says if you violate these policies you could lose your account forever and that's true um they say though if if you make a mistake you know and it really is innocent uh, they, they usually will send you a warning. Whatever email is connected with your AdSense account, they'll email you a warning to that account. And if you don't change it, you'll get suspended. And if you do get suspended, they actually have an appeals program. You can go and try to appeal to get your account back. Uh, just don't put yourself in that position. And really, this is it, guys. Like, if you follow these policies right here, th there's no reason that you're going to ever see your account get suspended. These are these are the major highlights. So I, I went through 
a bunch of training myself and then I've I've uh, done a lot of reading in their policies and I this is it like I just kind of summarized all that information if you follow these policies you're gonna be good okay questions about the policies guys real quick before we go on I know it's kind of boring to go through policies I get that but for this we we definitely needed to do it okay let me know if we need to spend any more time on those um, okay if you have questions about policies here's here's where you need to look number one they have a support section support.google.com slash adsense i forgot to put that in so support.google.com slash adsense that's where their official policies are, are posted they have a blog adsense has a blog that posts information and news um, http colon slash slash adsense dot blogspot dot com um, there's some cool stuff there in fact let me show you guys something real quick i'm going to go to the blog again apparently they just came out with an app recently so you can track your earnings on on an application on your phone um, the adsense app um, but the one that i thought was interesting they have news and information here oh this one right here um, Hindi content is key to growing an audience in India. So apparently, statistically, there's there's more and more people that are accessing the internet in India. There's not a lot of internet content um, in Hindi. And so, uh, anyway, bottom line is people who have some experience um, creating Hindi content or know the language and the culture if you could if you knew that you could start creating pages of content on the internet and posting ads and you'd put yourself in a really good position because there's not a lot of ads out there for this kind of stuff so anyway they just it's kind of cool you, if you follow the AdSense blog the AdSense blog you know they'll give you information and tips and tricks I fortunately um, I don't uh, I, I don't try to profess to know anything about uh hindi content so that wouldn't be me but if any of you guys know hindi then there you go if you could create some content in hindi you you could make yourself a small fortune it looks like um anyway anyway yeah so i i just wanted to show you guys this blog real quick and then last but not least there's a uh a form section let me go back here official forum okay you can see the address listed right here um, there's there's AdSense experts that will get back to you from the forum it's not like if you have a problem with AdSense it's not like you can pick up the phone and call them uh, they have their support they don't have like live support over the phone or even email you can't just email them directly but you can go to their official forum and you can get help from other people that do AdSense and I've been there before and it's 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 pretty good to use so I I, I posted that link there okay Okay, so back to what we said earlier. There's two ways that you guys are gonna to wanna to start this. Um, number one is sign up for an AdSense account for your e-commerce blog. You're not probably gonna post any AdSense on your e-commerce website. And that should be somewhat obvious because if I sell yoga products on my, on my website and then I post AdSense on my site, AdSense is probably gonna automatically populate Inf um, ads that are related to my site well if my site's about yoga they're going to start populating with yoga ads for people that have yoga businesses and so I don't want my customers on my e-commerce site clicking on ads that send them to another business just to make 50 cents on a click right so you see that but I could do that on my blog because my blog is more informational and and it's not my website or my business directly if that makes sense so that's one way you guys can do it number two is come up with a niche that you're passionate about and create a blog solely to create good content and then advertise and monetizing it using adsense and other affiliate offers so that's what we talked about earlier create a blog specifically just for this purpose to do adsense and that's what i'd like to see a lot of you guys do anyway at some point um, let me bring yours up, Alan. So Alan, I'm working with Alan and, and Jennifer, and they, they have a business out in South Carolina um, that does car detailing. So if you guys are ever in the Myrtle Beach area, um, you're gonna wanna talk to Alan. 
But Alan, so here's the question. How could you implement this strategy? Well, I imagine on your site, and we actually have it on your site, Alan, there's going to be a blog. And on that blog, you can, you can share information about detailing. Tips for people who want to do some cleaning and some detailing on their own, which doesn't compromise what you do. Your service is to go and do detailing for people, but there's a lot of people on the internet that do their own car detailing, right? I say that loosely. That would be people like me who on a Saturday, you know, grab the vacuum and vacuum out my car. Or um, I heard a guy the other day, I, th this was funny enough, it was out on the golf course. He was talking about his lights. You know how on your, um, on, you know, on your headlights on your car over the years, they get, I think they get moisture inside them and they start to go from a really nice white color to kind of a pale yellow over the years. Happens out here in Utah a lot probably happens everywhere, right? But I heard a guy talking about, you know, what he's done. You know, he's got like these home remedies that he uses to clean that up and make it look perfectly white again, like new. So anyway, that would like, that would be some content that you could do, Alan. Like you could put that kind of a trick on your blog and then put some AdSense on it. People would find that online because they'd find that value, that content very valuable and then you post your ads there, and ads that would show up would be stuff related to car detailing, maybe car detailing products, car cleaning products, waxes, paints, whatever. And that stuff would show up for people who are looking at your stuff. So, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff that we could do. Um, Kirk, you just said thinking of doing a health blog. Well, funny enough, in, in my research recently, health was one of the number one Apparently, the number one of the number one best paying um, niches. So, in other words, there were, there was a page. I'll have to find it for you guys so I can share it and you guys can see what I did. But there was a page that that sort of ranked the best niches for doing AdSense, right? So, like if you health was one of the ones at the top. There's a lot of advertisers in the health industry, and apparently they pay pretty well. So, if you have a really good health blog. Um, and you post AdSense on it, the per click amount that you make off of a health blog is generally better than a lot of other blogs. Um, finance was on that list as well. If you do a blog on personal finance or stocks or investing, real estate was on the list. Um, internet marketing was on the list. If you do a blog talking about internet marketing secrets and tips. Anyway, there were just a bunch of niches listed there where the ads tend to pay out a little bit better. So if any of that sounds at all remotely interesting um, to you, yeah, you ought to consider a blog like that. But that's the thing. you gotta be, you got to be um, somewhat savvy to, to your content. you got to be passionate about it. Catherine, I know you have a – I think you have a master's in finance, right? Um, Catherine's one of my clients. She said, I, I want to do a financial planning blog. You could. Um, Having done having done some blogging in finance before, Catherine, I know the payouts are good for AdSense. I've I've run AdSense ads on that blog for a long time, and you know there's clicks where you're making a few bucks per click. I've seen some clicks where you make four or five bucks on a click. Um, you know what I mean? So it just depends. But you know, go over go over your niche with your coach first before you decide anything. Hopefully, they can give you some advice on it. But it's it's got to be something you're passionate about. We'll talk more about that here in just a second. Okay, so here's the key: um, you got to have good content. Okay, so th there's no way to sort of, you know, cut corners doing this. If if you're actually going to make good money using AdSense, you you can't you can't copy content like we talked about. You can't just throw up some copied articles. You, you, like you need to do a good job on your website. Google kept emphasizing that in a lot of the trainings I went through where they're like, look, you know, the internet needs people, webmasters who are are passionate about their topic and who are well thought out in what they write and put online. You know, they want your unique perspective. And you may say, well, I don't know much about, you know, the health industry. We'll go out and learn some things, read some blogs, and then and then write some of your own opinions on your own blog. And that's kind of how I did it when I did this finance blog that I do. I started that blog when I was like a, I think I was like a junior in college. I was just getting into my major in finance. And I was like, oh, you know, 
I really liked finance. I liked stocks. I liked investing. And so I started this blog and I didn't know very much about investing at all, but I was, because I was majoring in it and that was going to be what I studied in college. I was reading up on finance all the time. I was reading stuff online. I was reading blogs. And so it was really easy for me to formulate some of my own opinions and, and, and post some of my own content. Okay. Um, Anyway, you can even do like current stuff. So you could create a site. Some of you guys, I don't know if some of you guys saw the debate last night. I watched part of it. I, I recorded it because I, I was interested in watching the whole thing and I only, I only caught bits and pieces of it. But you could create like a, a blog that follows the, um, you know, the next presidential election and be blogging about what's going on and stuff you're seeing and policies and your opinion on different things. And you could post ads on a site like that, and boom, you've got a site that you can make money off of. So you can get really creative in what you choose to do as a niche, but your content's got to be good. If you get in there and write content that's, you know, poorly written, uh, no images, no, not a lot of interest, um, the site's kind of ugly looking, right? There's not a lot to it. The information is clearly half copied and, and just not very good. Nobody's going to read it. It's not going to rank well in Google and therefore you're not going to do well, period. So like, I really mean this great content is key and it's something that we probably need to talk more about in some other training um, to really define what that is. Cause that's the, that's the crux of, of everything we're doing. If your content's not good, you're probably not going to be successful. Now it doesn't mean you have to be, of an expert writer, but you've got to be willing to hone your writing skills and, and create good content. And anyway, so we could, we could go on and on about that, but we don't have time right now. Questions about that guys specifically, I'm going to go on to the next slide real quick. So here's, here's my recommendation specifically. Okay. So you just, so you have kind of a, 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 a bigger picture game plan for what you would do for your blog. Um, number one, you would you would choose a niche with your coach. Okay, we've talked about some already. Financial planning, you know, health. Now, health is very general. It could be specifically nutrition or just organic products, or you know, organic natural health or whatever. Um, it could be running. You could have a, a blog all about running and and training and how to how to get ready for a marathon or you could do something, you know, about stretching or, you know what I mean? You can do micro niches within things. And, and really the more specific you are on your, on your blog, the better you'd be. If you just specialized on a blog that just talked about, you know, the best types of stretches for the best kinds of physical activity, that, that could be the whole purpose of your blog right there. Okay. So choosing a niche that you're comfortable with, that it's approved by your coach, that you're passionate about. It's got to be something you love and you're willing to learn about. That's, that's critical. That's number one. Now, once you've decided that, um, you need to start the blog. Now, it's actually easy, okay? Um, you find a hosting company like a GoDaddy or a Bluehost.com. You buy a domain name and you buy some hosting for the site. Luckily, when you're doing an informational site, the hosting is very inexpensive. You're talking a few bucks a month. So you'll buy a domain name, which is usually, what, 12, 15, 16 bucks a year or whatever. And then you buy hosting with that, which is usually just a few bucks a month. And so your, your website could cost you like five or six bucks a month. My financialnut.com site costs me, I want to say like four bucks a month. It's a giant site. It has hundreds of pages. Now, some of you guys are going to be like, well, why is the hosting so cheap with one of those sites versus an e-commerce site? Well, when you have an e-commerce site, you have a shopping cart. You've got a lot of advanced features that you wouldn't need on a blog like this. Informational websites generally have much cheaper hosting. So go, I don't care who you host with. Those are some that we use, GoDaddy and Bluehost. But get your domain name. Get the cheapest hosting package you can. Um, and then you can set up a WordPress site. I, sh I should have added that there, but you want to you want to put your blog most likely on a WordPress platform. If if you're using a blog a blogger platform or a Blogspot platform, a lot of you guys who are doing e-commerce sites with us are using those. Those are fine too. 
it's more of a preference thing. I like WordPress if I'm doing a site independently. Um, that's my recommendation, but it's up to you. C here is create 10 to 15 really good blog posts. So before you ever apply for an AdSense account, you want to have a bunch of content already on the site. You don't want to go and apply for an AdSense account. They're going to ask you where you, you plan on putting your ads, and you can't give them a website that doesn't have anything on it. They won't approve you. And if you try to give them a website that has a bunch of copied content, they won't approve you. You need to have, you know, 10, 15 articles of really well-written content before you look to set up your AdSense, okay? And then, letter D there, start to monetize with AdSense. Work with your coach. We can tell you where to place your ads to see what works most effectively, okay? Once that's done and you have your ads posted, then you want to drive as much traffic to your site as you can. If you don't drive traffic to your site, nobody's going to click on your ads, and if nobody clicks on your ads, you're not going to make money anyway, right? But so anyway, I suggest some keyword research, some on-site SEO, some link building, some social media, Facebook, Twitter. I mean, the the marketing on a on a on a WordPress site is is very similar to the marketing that you're going to be doing on an e-commerce site. Really, really similar. Um, same principles really do apply. So what you guys are learning right now in e-commerce definitely applies to this. But you know what? My favorite part about this whole this whole strategy of making money online using AdSense and doing a you know doing a niche site like this is the fact that the money is truly passive, right? Like if you do a e-commerce site and you're doing drop shipping or you're carrying your own inventory, you're always fulfilling orders, you're dealing with customers. You're, you're doing the business side of the business quite a bit, in addition to all this other stuff. But if you own one of these sites that's just using AdSense or affiliate links to promote and to make and to make money, um, it's not it's not nearly as laborious, right? You want to create content, but once you create it, it's like my financial nut site. I don't I haven't posted an article or put any content on that site for years yet I still make money every single month off of my ads because I repeatedly get tons of traffic to the site. So I'm telling you right now, like if some of you guys are looking for truly passive income, um, this, this can actually create that for you if you do a good job of it. No customer service, no daily maintenance, nothing. There's a lot of work up front to get it started, but long term, it's, it's a pretty awesome solution. Um, there's a lot of examples of sites that do this out there that make pretty good money. Uh, I thought I would show you a couple. I found some some interesting research on on those that are making a lot of money off AdSense. And these are a couple of examples. How many of you guys have heard of ehow.com? Looks like this. E ehow, E H O W. Anybody? If you've ever looked for information online, you, you may have heard of it. It's a website that prides itself in, in giving out information about virtually anything. So for example, it's kind of like a blog, it's an article site. You'll see it in Google a whole bunch, but here's here's like a here's an article um, by this um, this author right here, Julie. How to make pesto with any herb. Right, so they have articles about garden, home, tech, style, crafts, food, finance, whatever. And the content's really good. Like if you went through this, the pictures are awesome, the content's all totally original. So it's, it's a this person wrote this wrote up this recipe. They give you step by step instructions on how to make this amazing pesto sauce or whatever. And uh and then at the end they have some tips and that's it. Okay. That's how all these articles are. They're kind of like how-to articles or whatever. Sally, you use it a lot, you say. Catherine, you've heard of it. Um, Sue, you said you've used it. So a lot of people have used it. Um, and then they've got, they've got these ads. Now you'll notice these ads right here, these are Google AdSense ads, all of these right here. Okay. They say sponsored links right here. And they're Google AdSense ads. Um, there's some more down here at the bottom. These these ones actually aren't. These are a different network. I think there's some here at the top. 
let's see. That's not. This is right here, though. This is an AdSense ad. These right here. All the these um these car ads right here for Chevrolet. These are AdSense. So if I clicked on one of those, eHow's getting paid. So their whole business model is they. I don't know exactly how it works, but they ended up, they were smaller at one point, just like all of us are and grew and grew and grew. And now they're, they're really well recognized. And they, all they do is they hire a lot of art, uh, a lot of authors who write up content and post it on eHow. They don't sell product. They just have tons of good information. Well, um, as I was showing there on my PowerPoint slide, these guys make 400 grand a month in AdSense ads, right? Can you imagine? Like that's just through people coming to the site and clicking on, on these random ads on the screen, 400 grand a month. Now I'm not suggesting that I think any of you guys are gonna be making 400 grand a month off of your AdSense. But could you make four grand a month? Sure. Could you make 10 grand a month? It's possible, yeah. This is obviously the exception to the rule. Um, but AdSense is, is the real deal. Now these guys make so much money because they get just a tremendous amount of traffic in Google. And why do they get so much traffic? Well, because they have really, really good content. Um, and, and if your content was as well done as these guys' content and you had as much of it as they do, then you would be making that kind of money too. So it's not, it's not, uh, it's not unreasonable to think that you can actually make thousands of dollars. Now, they, they, you only make 40 cents a click, 50 cents, sometimes a dollar a click, sometimes 10 cents a click. So you have to get a lot of clicks to make that kind of money. But if you're getting a ton of traffic, uh, you can definitely get the clicks, right? We're running short on time, so I'm not going to show you the other one. This is uh, lab, L-A-B-N-O-L dot org. This guy makes 50 grand a month on his, um, on his AdSense. And his site is specifically about anything digital. Um, digital marketing, um, computers, technology, anything that's sort of new. Um, you, um, like his first article right here, or what was written on the 16th, find out how much traffic a website gets. He has an article about how to figure out how popular certain websites are, right? Lots of tech articles. That's what he knows. That's That's what he does. He's done a good job on his site, gets a lot of traffic, has a lot of great content. Therefore, this guy, this guy, this guy makes 50 grand a month off of, you know, off of his AdSense. Okay, pretty exciting stuff, right? I don't make 50 grand a month on my AdSense, I can tell you that. But if I, if I worked hard enough and worked on my site, got good content going, I, you know, you could work towards that, right? At, at the bare minimum, you guys can make decent money and decent money is defined differently depending on who you talk to. But a real strategy. I kind of want to show you some examples of, of people who are really doing it and doing it on a bigger level. That's not our expectation of you, but we do expect to, to see you guys actually use this and, and be capable of making thousands of dollars. That's, that's very possible. Okay. So what we'll probably do in our, in our next installment in this series is, is we'll probably take you through setting up a blog maybe using WordPress and setting one up and just, and just kind of show you how I would do it. Choose a niche and start creating some content, show you how to practically get ads onto a site. I think that's probably the direction we'll take it. Um, I'm open to suggestions too. If, if you guys have questions about this or thoughts on maybe what we could spend some more time on, but I think you've, you've done enough learning about theory over the past couple of webinars that we've talked about this. Hopefully this is starting to make sense and you guys can understand why this works and how it works. Now we need to show you um, more practically how to do it. Um, so that's what we'd like to do. Let me see what questions we've got and then we'll finish up. Um, sorry, I'm just reading through some of your guys' comments. Cheryl, you said how often does the blog come out? What blog are you talking about? Are you saying how often should you create a, an article or a blog post or, or clarify that for me? Sorry, I, yeah, I think you asked that question 10 minutes ago. Catherine, you say why not blogger? Um, no reason in particular. It's, it's kind of like, what do you like better, you know, apples or oranges? I like apples. If, I, if, I, if, 
I surveyed my wife, she'd say oranges. They're, they're both very effective. It's just a preference thing. I prefer WordPress. I, I think it's actually a little more powerful and it's got some more tools and stuff you can do, but um, you can you can make great money either way. They're both great pl platforms for sure. Um, all right, Catherine, you say, what if I set up a healthy living blog separate from my GLS blog, which is your e-commerce blog, but use some similar posts because it's also related to GLS categories? Would I get penalized for duplicate content? No, as long as the articles are not direct copies from the other. You just got to make, you can, you can do similar topics. Um, you could even have an article on one that talks about the health benefits of eating oranges. And then you could have a you could have a blog post on the other that's on the health benefits of eating oranges, but as long as they're not the exact same blog post and they've got different points and they flow a little differently and and they're not the same thing, different pictures, then it's a different blog post, even though the topic and the subject matter is pretty much the same. Yeah, so Kirk, I, you know, I don't know if I would come to that conclusion really. Kirk said so. E-commerce sites are a bit more lucrative, question mark. Um, or maybe that was just a statement, Kirk. I'm not sure. I, no, not necessarily. I would say e-commerce websites. The reason why we start a, a lot of you guys doing drop shipping websites is because we think you can make money quicker that way. AdSense can take more time, and it's more of a longer-term strategy, I would say. You can make money off of that pretty quickly too, but historically we've just found our clients make more money more quickly off of their e-commerce drop shipping site, and that's why we teach doing AdSense a little bit later on. But but long term, there's less work involved um, on an AdSense site, no doubt about it. And yeah, Rob, we're going to be doing this soon. I, I want to do a bunch of a bunch of these types of, of webinars because I've gotten a lot of interest in AdSense and, and I think it's a great way for you guys to make money. So yeah, sooner rather than later for sure. I just try to balance a lot of the, you know, a lot of the, the demand for what we talk about on these Thursday nights and, and so um, probably next week, but we'll see. Um, Diana, you said do a blog on an, on an e-commerce site. Um, question mark, you can uh, clarify that. What do you mean exactly? You, you can do that for sure. Like on your site, we could we can definitely create a blog off of that. And your subject matter is good for a blog for sure. How often do you need to put up a new blog? Weekly, monthly? Um, more often than monthly um, and at least probably once a week. I, I would say at a minimum four times a month. But it just depends on how, you know, the more content you have that's out there, the more money you're going to make. So, yeah, weekly. But there was a time when I was doing Financial Nut where my goal was a blog post, one per day. And I would spend an hour and a half every single day, and I'd crank out a really good blog post. And I was doing 30 posts a month. So I've got, you know, there's a time, 30 posts a month. You take 30, multiply that by 12 months in a year, right? You're doing 360 roughly blog posts a year those are all sitting out there in google over the years generating me money when people find them and click on my ads like that's that's why ehow is making 400 grand a month because they have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of articles that are out there in google that people are finding if you even have a small slice of of the share of of informational articles that are out there that people are looking for that you, you can monetize that and make some serious money for sure. Good, Kirk. I'm glad you I'm glad you like the idea of doing some of this. Good, Connie. Um, Connie says, learned a lot tonight, but still have so much more to learn. I think uh, probably a lot of us are feeling that way that are here. Exciting info, though. Thinking about health because I'm a nurse, so you've encouraged me. Yeah, good. Hey, I mean, do what, do what you know, right? All of us know and are good at certain things, right? I, I feel like I know personal finance pretty well. I had a client once that 
she and this was her niche seriously she knew anything and everything about like celebrity gossip i'm telling you like this she loved this stuff she'd eat it up in magazines she'd read about it online well she threw up a blog post about it in fact there's a famous blog out there can't remember the name of it off the top of my head it was on it was on the list of top revenue generating blogs for adsense and they were making off of celebrity gossip they were making uh, well over 100 grand a month on on adsense so it's like you really should do what you're passionate about and uh, don't try to do something that you think is just good because it'll make you money do something you're passionate about for sure glad you came Dwanda if you guys haven't seen our original AdSense webinar, go check it out. Um, it can be done with Volusion, Diana. Um, I've got some trainings on, on how to set that up. We, we can show you how to do that for sure. Um, Sally asks, is it pricey to get traffic to your blog? No, it doesn't have to be. I've actually never spent a dime on my blog for traffic. Um, what's pricey about it is it's pricey in terms of your time because it's going to take you some time to do. And for those, those people out there that are trying to do something like this that aren't in a training program like you guys are in, um, they're out there just trying to figure it out on their own. That's where it becomes pricey. Even if they're not willing to spend anything on their education and, and they're, they're thinking they're saving money that way, they're really not because they're spending tons of, tons of time trying to figure it out themselves. So you guys who are here who paid the price to be in our program, I, I would argue that that's what makes it pricey. But you've already done that. So no, you don't have to spend more money on marketing your blog. Um, good, Kirk. I hope all this helps out. Um, it's up to you, Diana. You can either tie this to your existing e-commerce site or you can do a totally separate unrelated blog if you want it's like me it's like i've got a site that sells jewelry and then i've got a a blog that does finance right nothing's related about that so they can be totally different it's it's really up to you yeah judy you could do that that sounds great okay well, guys, I got to go too. Um, we're we're an hour into this. Thanks for staying the whole time. Hopefully, this was helpful. Um, if you want to see this again, I'll post it online as soon as possible, um, up onto YouTube, so you guys can review it. Come on back next week on Thursday. Uh, we'll do this again, maybe on um, on AdSense and on blogging. We'll see. I'd, I'd like to, so um, plan on that. But we may do something else. And uh, hope to see you guys there. Thanks for coming along.